Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. Guys, today I want to talk about this not very well known, uh, rare potential complication from vaccine or any other kind of administration of injection into the deltoid muscle. The condition is called CIRBA, shoulder injury related to vaccine administration. Yeah, so I thought about mentioning this when I did a video about my experience getting my booster shot because in my experience, my vaccine was administered a little bit high. And I, I kind of feel like, feel like I really dodged a bullet here that I didn't have a shoulder injury from that because that is one of the potential outcomes of a vaccine administered high. Uh, but it doesn't mean it happens all the time, although the, the injury is probably underreported. And, you know, now that we are seeing so many injections, all you know, we've got so many people getting vaccinated, fortunately, uh, I do think that it warrants a video just to have some awareness about this. It is not a widely discussed and it's a fairly rare occurrence, but it's become more common. Not really since this pandemic, but since it used to be that vaccines were pretty much primarily just given by nurses. And in recent years, more and more different kinds of practitioners are allowed to administer vaccines. I'm not saying they're not good at them, but we just have many more people doing it and many different backgrounds of people doing it. We have MAs, we have pharmacists, we have pharmacy techs. Some cases we have students uh, who are giving vaccines. My thought is this might have something to do with why we've seen a rise in CIRVA, shoulder injury related to vaccine administration. Please nobody take this to mean that I'm saying don't get vaccinated and don't get vaccinated by a pharmacist if that's who's giving a vaccine in your area? Absolutely not. Overwhelmingly, the evidence weighs in favor of getting a vaccine, but I thought I would just tell you a little bit about this injury and actually how you can avoid getting it. Uh, even if you're not somebody who really knows about these landmarks, I will tell you about the landmarks on the body, but you'll be able to avoid this problem, which is already rare to begin with. So I had a little bit of a scare because really you don't know that a vaccine is given too high until it's done, right? You don't really know where a vaccine is going. Like they put it in and boom, it's done. It's all done in a fraction of a second. And I, I do remember registering in my head, well, that's a little bit high, you know, and, um, you know, when your arm hurts a lot from, I had a Moderna booster, I had the Moderna original series, it makes your arm hurt anyway. So then if you do feel, and in my case, I knew that the vaccine was given a little bit high, then you've got to, got to sweat it out a little bit and wonder, is this, is this an injury? You know, I'll have to wait like 48 hours when this should be down, when if it's just inflammation and then see if I've got any kind of a sequelae from it. Um, it looked to me like mine was given slightly high and it just was at probably at the very high end of the deltoid muscle instead of in the belly of the muscle. Uh, for sure that was the case. Um, but you never really see where it goes under the skin. And when it's given high in the muscle, it really could be that some of it is out of the muscle because the muscle is thinner up at the top. The belly of the muscle is kind of in the middle. And uh, the problem is that uh, sometimes that can go into the subcutaneous tissue and that's just not as vascular as the muscle, so you don't get as much of an immune response. Uh, but the bigger concern is that if it goes any further than that, depending on what size needle is being used, it can actually get into the joint, particularly in petite females, because there's just a whole lot there in a small space. So, you know, when this gets into the joint, then you have really big problems. And very often it manifests itself by severe pain and pain that won't allow people to lift the shoulder. So that especially in this direction, they usually can't get above here. Um, another indication is that lifting your arm in an arc, so like this, you get to a point where there's pain and then if you work through the pain and continue to lift, the pain stops. And then when you're up higher, there is no pain. Some people can't even lift it any further. It's not a question of working through the pain. They can't do it. Uh, there's all different ideas about what might help with this. There are all different therapies like steroid injections. There is physical therapy. There, there's even surgeries for it, but it seems like a significant portion of people who suffer this injury don't find relief or it takes a very long time for them to find relief. There are some newer therapies like surgeries that I've seen described with washing out the joint and it seems like that's really promising. But you know, you just don't want to get this kind of an injury, right? Just, you know, you figure you're going to do all the best things and go get the vaccine and then you like end up with some kind of a shoulder injury. And not only that, then you have to wonder like, well, a joint's not a very vascular place. If some of this went into the joint, you know, did I get a good immune response? Probably not. Um, the current CDC recommendation is that even if it's recognized that an injection went into the wrong place, that you're not supposed to get another shot. You don't get another vaccine. So like, did I miss my booster? Did I lose my second shot in my two-part series? I, I think that all this can create a whole lot of 
unnecessary angst. You know, in my opinion, it's best addressed proactively with a whole lot of training so that people who are administering vaccines really come to understand the importance of the landmarks. Uh, I'm, as of course, in my background in nursing, I know that there's certain landmarks that we use by which we give the vaccines or any other shot for that matter. So an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. But if you're the patient and you're sitting down, I will tell you the certain things that are risk factors uh, for an inadvertent uh, higher than correct injection. And I'll tell you what I what you might do to avoid that. So I'm just going to turn my arm kind of to the side because my deltoid muscle is not all that obvious unless I do this. And you can see from about here to here, this bump, that's the deltoid muscle. Now above that is where you get into the shoulder joint. And, you know, below that, you've got a lot of subcutaneous tissue and underneath and on top of the muscle, you have a lot of subcutaneous tissue. So one of the things that you might not want somebody to do is to pinch here when they're about to put an injection in. That's fine if you're doing the subcutaneous injection, but if you really want to get that down into the muscle, you don't want to pinch and bring up more of the fatty tissue so that you know, a shorter needle especially might not get all the way down to the muscle. If they're using a longer needle, yeah, maybe, but you really aren't supposed to pinch when you're doing an intramuscular injection in the deltoid muscle. You're supposed to use the right size needle, the right length needle, so that you can get it into the muscle. And then, if anything, you'll want to hold it down so that you're, you're doing the opposite of that pinching to get the fat layer up over the muscle. You're holding it down so that your needle ends up in the muscle. So, you know, if my deltoid starts about here and it ends about here, then this is really the belly of the muscle. Now, we don't really want to go too low because there's nerve issue there. So we do go on the higher end of the belly of the deltoid muscle. But in my, I'll try to find a picture. I think I took a picture of it. My shot was done in this arm. And I actually saw the mark where the needle went in and I circled it. And you can see that it's definitely at the very, very high tip of that deltoid muscle. I, kind of risky in my opinion. The formula is to use finger breaths from the acromion process. The acromion process is here where the collarbone meets the humerus, which is the long bone in the upper arm. And to take two to three finger breaths, so finger breath is the width of my finger. So here's my acromion process. Here's two finger breaths. Here's th three finger breaths. I do three just to be safe. It's been years since I've given people uh, intramuscular injections, but that's the third finger breath. And right below that or at it, you draw a horizontal line, and that does, if you can see, that does put us right at the belly of my muscle. That's about the widest spot of my muscle, other than maybe down here, but that's down low. So two to three finger breaths, you draw a line, and you give it right at the midline, looking at the patient from the side, and that would be about right here. My injection was about right up here. And of course, as soon as it was in, I knew that it had been high. It felt high. The most common complaint when people present with severe shoulder pain, and again, this is all very rare, but when they do present with this after an injection, the most common thing they say is, I had a shot that was given really high. Uh, I heard one orthopedic surgeon say that he used to dismiss this kind of thing, but in the recent years, he's seen about a dozen of these cases, and that's like one guy, and he said he always listens. Now, after that, there are all kinds of things that you have to do to diagnose that that in fact was the problem. They have to do some imaging studies. What they do is some ultrasound or some MRI and see if they see fluid that's in there that's stretching the joint capsule and that would tell them that some injection got put in there. They can sometimes see an inflammatory process going on inside there. So there is some discovery to do. It's not just a matter of, oh, this hurts after somebody gave me a vaccine. That is not enough to satisfy a diagnosis of CIRVA. So you do have a road ahead of you, and that usually doesn't start for about two weeks because it has to go on for more than two weeks by definition. So two weeks after the injection, if this hasn't settled down, uh, I can imagine that like two days after the injection, like your arm really shouldn't be sore anymore. So then you've got another like almost two weeks where you can sit there and sweat bullets about it and worry and hope that the inflammation subsides. But uh, when I went looking at this, it was just really very sad because, like I said, it's just so avoidable if you see these landmarks. So one of the things that is helpful is just to have shown you the landmarks already. You can look at those and see what they are. Uh, of course, that doesn't mean you have the power to do it yourself because somebody else is doing this on you, but it always helps if you know what you're looking at. And then there are just a couple other points I can make that might really help so that you don't have this, albeit very rare, injury. One is that it is more overrepresented in people who receive the vaccine when they're sitting down and the person administering the vaccine is standing up. There's something about that angle that is distorted when somebody's standing up and they really should be about level with you. So you can ask, you can say, hey, I read this thing and I'm wondering if you'll sit down with me or can I stand up with you? 
you know, next time I get an injection like this, a deltoid intramuscular injection, I'm absolutely doing that. And I can think back, and I know that one pharmacy I've been to, I think where a few years ago I got a flu shot, that pharmacist made a point of sitting down. And I think I'm going to be going back there a little more often than the place I just went. Another thing that you can do if you're not so sure, you just kind of have this feeling or, you know, whatever it is that somebody's about to give you a shot and you, you know, they move really fast and you kind of want to know before it's too late and it's already history. What, one thing you can say is, hold on a second. Can, can you just show me where you're going? I'm just, I'm interested in seeing how you find, how you're going to find that landmark. And you can ask them to walk through the steps. And once they have to walk through the steps, they're just more likely to land in the same place. If you have further questions from there, you can ask them. But what that will do is put the brakes on the process. It slows the process down so something can't happen before you realize what's happening. I, I think those two things together, you know, really will help so that it's pretty fail safe. I'm definitely going to employ those two techniques the next time I get a shot because I felt like I had kind of a near miss. I'm very grateful that I didn't have any kind of shoulder injury. I did see that my injection was given high. Fortunately, it would seem to me that a lot of it did go into the muscle, although the muscle, it really wasn't the belly. The muscle's kind of small up there. But I definitely had the systemic inflammation, the sleepiness, the fatigue, the elevated temperature, whatever. If I got some of the injection in my subcutaneous tissue, you know, there's no way for me to know, but either I developed enough of an immune response from the dose that I did get, or even in the subcutaneous tissue, you can elicit some response. It's probably somewhat helpful. So, you know, and maybe none of those things were true. Maybe it all went into the muscle, even though it was injected very high. I have no way of knowing, but I'm glad that I'm no longer worrying about a shoulder injury and worrying about, well, now I can't have another shot because that one was gone. The whole thing about, you know, having to like go to a pharmacy where I'm not registered and start over it, whatever. It's kind of a tangent, I'm sorry, but my mind goes there when I'm starting to think of what ifs. So I kind of go to the worst case scenario and work back from there. I hope that nobody who's watching this has ever experienced CIRVA, shoulder injury related to vaccine administration, but I, I just thought that since it's something that sort of came to my consciousness because of my recent experience, uh, and fortunately I didn't have the injury, but I thought just because there was so little out there that I found when I went looking to learn more about it that it begs for some discussion. Hopefully I've saved somebody else that headache and that worry and let me know if it was helpful and until next time be well. Bye-bye.